Hey, what's up, guys? It's your girl, Christina Leandra Lopez, a.k.a. your classy hood chick. Thank you guys for stopping by and spending time with me. I know your time is valuable, so I greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And if you make it to the end, you know, like, comment, share. Let me know what your thoughts are, okay? I really, really appreciate it. So today, I'm going to be talking about how I reached 100000 in my liquid assets. So the other day, I was a little bit in a funk, and I just kind of was just spending some time in bed, you know, just getting some rest, really just trying to, you know, reboot myself, watching some chick flicks, just trying to relax, didn't want to do shit. And I'm like, you know what, I haven't really checked on my investments. So I'm going through my apps, kind of looking it up. And I'm like, wait a minute, because I do have different funds and different investments. So they're not all in one account. And so I'm looking at it. And I was like, oh, shit, I hit my 100,000 in my liquid assets. That was my goal for the end of this year. And I was really excited because I was like, oh, shit, like, I didn't even realize that I had reached it. Um, but I'm going to talk about how I did it and just things that helped me. But first and foremost, disclaimer, y'all, I am not a professional investor. I am not certified. I don't got no licenses. If you need a professional, please make sure you find somebody um, that you can seek professional advice from. But disclaimer, it isn't me. I'm just a girl on the internet. We about to just have a cup of coffee. I'm just sharing my journey, my story, and what helped me, okay, to achieve my goals. So we having a cup of coffee. Let's just sit back, chill, enjoy. So first, I want to talk a little bit about my recommendations. So really the things that helped me through this journey, because again, this is just my self-development journey. We're really trying to work on getting better in all different areas. You know, As you guys know, I love reading books. So my recommendation, especially if you're trying to reach financial goals, is to really immerse yourself with books and things that are going to be motivational for you. It could be podcasts. It can be YouTube videos. That helped me a lot. Just constantly keep on listening to that positive content because it's really going to help to keep you accountable. Because it's one thing if you you know, read one finance book or you watch a few videos and then you're like, all right, cool. And then you just fall off track because it's not on top of mind. You're not constantly reminding yourself of why you're doing this and why it's important to you. So that's my first recommendation. And just make sure you create a plan that's going to be real feasible, something that's easy. You don't want to overcomplicate it because again, you guys know I'm all about making things simple. If you make things too complicated, that's just when you fall off, right? So we ain't about that line. We about trying to make things simple. Just take little easy one, two, three steps like and get there. Okay. Cause it's achievable. You can do it. And I'm going to kind of just share just the basics of how I did it. So now let's get into it. So first you want to make sure that you first pick a brokerage account. Okay. So I took some notes here. So I'm going to kind of be looking down referencing to my notes, just to make sure I stay on track, but make sure you pick a brokerage account. It really doesn't matter which one. Um, I use Merrill Lynch as one of my funds, I also have Vanguard. Um, I have a Fidelity account, but I, I don't utilize that one. So I don't really, I don't have any funds in there. Um, but you can pick any one. Again, do your research, your due diligence, and look to see what's going to work for you. Really, you can't really go wrong. Just pick one. The whole point is just don't overcomplicate it. Just pick one and just go with it. That's it. Okay, so keep it simple. Um, again, I think Fidelity and Vanguard from a lot of the books that I read and a lot of the YouTubers that I followed, you know, regarding finances, Fidelity and Vanguard definitely are most popular because they do have specific index funds that are for that brokerage particularly um, that you wouldn't be able to. Well, I think you can actually buy them from a different brokerage, but I'm not really sure on that. So anyways, just pick one. Don't overcomplicate it. Just, you know, find one that you like. There's so many out there. You know, there's E-Trade, um, you know, there's Webull. Um, there's so many different ones that you can utilize, but keep it simple. Again, I use Merrill Lynch. There's Vanguard, Fidelity, which are very, very popular. So now that you got that, step one, easy. Just pick one, you know, do spend some time, you know, spend about 30 minutes, you know, an hour, just kind of looking up to see what you like and just go with it, okay? So now create your account. So create your account. It's going to walk you through step by step. There's instructions, you guys. I'm all about instructions. Like, like it's just follow step by step. Don't overcomplicate it. You know how to open one up, open it, create it, sign yourself up. So that's just the first step. That's easy. Okay. So make sure you do that. Next step two, you're going to pick a fund. Now, this is where I definitely would say you will spend a little bit more time, um, doing research, you know, finding things that maybe are more valuable to you. And what I mean by that is that a fund can be a mutual fund and index fund, which are going to be the two most popular um, routes that you're going to want to go. Now, the difference, again, I'm not an expert. I'm just kind of sharing the things that I've learned. Now, the main difference is that an index fund is passively managed. So it is going to be less fees. 
um, because it's not actively managed. A mutual fund is actively managed. So a mutual fund, they do typically tend to have higher fees, but there is a professional that is watching over the portfolio that is constantly um, reviewing it and making trades within that fund. Um, now, a lot of experts and, you know, a lot of the people that I've, you know, read books from and followed, they do always recommend an index fund is going to be your best bet because, again, it's less fees, it's passively managed, and both a mutual fund and index fund basically are like, it's like 500 companies in one. So you're not putting all your money into one company because again you would want to do more research on that to see is this company stable or are they going to go bankrupt you, know, you again there's a lot more that goes into it i want to encourage you guys to please go do some additional research again this is not what this video is about i'm just trying to keep it simple in the steps that i used um, but pick a fund my best recommendation would be a mutual fund or index fund like i said index funds tend to be uh, most popular, especially for someone who wants to just set it and forget it. Um, I have a mutual fund that I use. Um, I wish I probably would have picked an index fund, but at the time I guess when I got started, I just wanted to get started. So I was like, you know what? I did a lot of research as far as like what companies were in that fund. And so that's what I mean by choosing a fund, spending some time to really look to see, okay, you know, what is what companies are in this fund? Is this something that is aligned, you know, with my personal goals or just your values? Because there are funds that are more um, like healthcare based. And then there's funds that are even more, let's say like, um, like gas oil based, or there's just funds that are kind of a little mix of everything like technology. So really spend some time. I would really recommend just spend a little time. I mean, even if it takes you, you know, two hours, three hours, or, you know, 30 minutes this day, another 30 minutes this day, really just take some time to really find out. Because once you set this fund and you pick this fund, this is where you're going to want to start really just making an avalanche and just adding and adding and increasing your contributions. So I would say that this is probably an important step to really do some research to find one that, again, aligns with your goals, aligns with your uh, morals and your values and something that you feel confident in. So I personally have a mutual fund. Um, I do also have a few other funds as well, but um, I have some stocks in, you know, specific companies that I, again, it's like if I'm going to be a consumer of, I'd rather have some ownership of, but we're not going to talk too much about that, about stocks and things like that. Really, let's just keep this simple. Pick your brokerage account is step one, set it up. Um, and then step two is just pick your fund. So find a fund, do some research, spend some time. Okay. Step three. You're going to determine how much you can afford to set aside and to contribute to this fund. Okay. So again, this is really, everybody's going to be different. Um, some people are going to be struggling with some debt and maybe, you know, getting out of that debt is most important to you first. And I would agree with that, but I would also say this is just really going to be something that you're going to have to make a choice and determine on your own. I personally feel that even with debt, if I was, you know, if I'm trying to pay off some debt, I really do feel it's still important to start investing because I think it's more building the habit. So you can start off with $100 a month or $50 a month. Look at the fund and double check because every fund is a little bit different. So some funds do have a, a minimum on an amount that you need to contribute. But there are funds that you can contribute as less as 50 bucks. I think $25. It really just depends on the fund that you're choosing. So make sure that you keep that in mind because I know there was um, one that I had looked upon that I looked at one time. And I want to say the minimum was like 300 bucks. So you'd have to put a minimum of at least $300 to start that fund. So really, again, this is you just picking something that's going to work for you and really just finding an amount that you can contribute to and sticking to it. Because really, it's just about building the habit. So again, this is going to be, everybody's going to be different. You have to make a choice that's going to work best for you. I know some people really encourage, hey, paying off all your debt first and having every penny go to debt before you start investing. I personally don't really believe in that philosophy again, because I think as we're paying off that debt, we really need to start getting into the habit of building our investment portfolio and just creating that discipline. Okay. So once you determine how much you can set aside, again, you can really dive a lot deeper into this. So in the beginning, I really kept it simple. I was like, Hey, you know what? I'm just going to put a hundred bucks a month away because think about it. A lot of us just spend a lot of money on shit that we're like, we're, we don't even know where the fuck our money went. So to me, it was like a hundred bucks was easy. Right. And then I increased it. Okay. Now I can put 150 into this fund and 150 into this fund. So now I'm putting $300 a month. And then once I got my 401k through work again, slowly just started to increase those contributions. So 
in the beginning, I would say it depends on your situation and you can keep it very simple and just say, hey, I'm just going to do X amount of dollar because this I know I can easily set aside and it's not going to hinder me financially and I could just act like I never had it. But now for me, once I started to increase my contribution, this is where I started to dive deeper. So if you want to dive a little bit deeper, I would I would also recommend, you know, spend that extra time because it's going to be worth it. And that's really what I did this year to help get me to that hundred thousand. So last year, I want to say I, I can't find if I wrote it down or where I was at at the end of last year, but I would say roughly my investments last year were roughly probably around about 65000 when I ended the year last year, somewhere around there, give or take. Um, and now here we are about 11, 12 months later, and I finally reached my 100000 right? So ways that I was able to do that was I dived a little deeper. I really just went through my finances again, went through my expenses, was really just trying to hone in. I started using um, two money apps or financial apps to really help me to get more of a budget and a spending plan. So I downloaded Mint and I downloaded Rocket Money. I downloaded both because I wanted to see which one I liked best as far as the formatting and just the ease of use. And honestly, I'm just going to keep using both because... <laughs> I wanted to only use one because again, I don't like to overcomplicate things. But the reason why I'm using both is because for some reason, Rocket Money is not linking one of my investment accounts. And so it's not updating the amount that's invested. But Mint um, does. It's It linked all my investment accounts from, from the different brokerage accounts that I have. And it's been updating as far as my investments and my liquid assets and my net worth. So I do like that Mint has a better capability of being able to link to all my accounts. With Rocket Money, I'm not really sure what the glitch is there. Um, maybe I have to call their customer service. I'm not sure. But I like Rocket Money more for my budgeting and my spending plan. I really like their format better with uh, being able to kind of have a big overview. Um, I have different categories. And with men, I believe you can do this as well. But again, I just was like, I'm going to use Rocket Money to really keep track of my spending of my budgets and just holding me accountable and then i'm just going to use mint to keep track of my investments and the increase in the contributions and things of that nature so i am using both so that definitely did help me so with the contributions again this year i just dived you know really deep i created a better spending plan i realized that i would just spend a lot of money on bullshit that i was like i could be utilizing that money to add more into my investments so that's pretty much what i did I mean, I was getting to the point where I was like, okay, my goal is to now put, you know, $2,500 a month away on top of what was being um, deducted automatically from my 401k and my IRA. And so I really just, this, this year, I really just was like, okay, I want to keep my expenses low and just make sure I'm able to just utilize all that extra money and just put it away and just start really um, throwing more money into my investment. So that's really what I did that really helped me as well. So again, everybody's different. If you're starting off, I would just recommend go start easy. You know, maybe it's just a dollar amount for right now. Just keep it simple. Again, the whole purpose is just to create the habit and become an investor. Okay, just start it, create your plan. And doesn't matter how much you're putting away, do what's going to work for you. And if you're more advanced and you want to dive deeper, you know go through your expenses you know um, kind of just revamp everything you know how much are you spending here you're gonna have to spend some time on that I went back I pulled up all my my bank statements and my credit card and I kind of just went through and went through every category and what I was spending and just to kind of say damn like I was spending how much on food on how much on eating now and it just gives you an eye-opener so that again it's really going to depend on you and how deep you want to go this year I was like it's time to get to the next level you know we, we got shit to do okay so for me I spend a lot of time doing that and I do review my finances you know, usually weekly, but um, definitely I'm always, I just always keep in track of my money, y'all, because you know what, like, I just love money, and we're just trying to have more of it, <laughs> okay, so like I mentioned, I had a video on my brain dump that I like to do, I would definitely recommend you watch that video, because um, I have one right here, this is the one from last year, uh, my brain dump journal that I have, and again, this is just a brain dump where I would literally go over my goals, finances, um to, it, anything again you can watch that video we ain't gonna talk about it too much here but it was nice to go back and to look at how i was tracking my finances you know how i was increasing the contributions and i really track hey this month i was able to put you know fifteen hundred dollars away you know or three thousand dollars away whatever the amount was and it's just really nice to go back and track and to see your progress and how i was able to increase it you know as i was increasing my income you know through my career and lowering my expenses and keeping them low so I hope that helps you guys. Now, last 
Step four, you just want to make sure you buy the funds. Okay, this is an important step because when I first started with my investment awareness and just really trying to, you know, get started on the whole journey, um, I had opened up an account and, and this was before my Merrill Lynch account. I had opened up another account and I thought, okay, I'm putting money away. I had the automatic contributions coming out because, you know, every brokerage will allow you to set up um, an automatic um, deduction from your paycheck so you can set it up how you want whether you want to set it up bi-weekly monthly however you want to do it there's def uh, different options with each brokerage so I had this going and I was at the time I was I was young I was in my 20s so I was like oh I'm gonna put about 150 bucks away I was putting this money away I want to say I did this for about a good year before I realized y'all I realized that I was not buying the funds so the money was accumulating however I never went back in there to buy the funds. So this is an important step because I feel like this gets missed and I missed it because nobody told me, right? Because I didn't have anybody in my family who was investing. I didn't have anybody that can tell me this. I was just kind of going off of, you know, books, you know, YouTube videos. And at that time I wasn't, I wasn't in deep as I was now, obviously that I'm older. But so at the time I kind of just like, Hey, I did it. I started it and I was excited. I was all proud. But nobody told me you got to go back and buy the funds. So here I am putting all this money and it's not even gaining interest. So I was real pissed off about that. So step four, please make sure you buy the funds. So once you create your brokerage account, once you set how much you want to contribute to your account, whether you set it up automatically or you just transfer it manually, once you do that, you will have, I think they call it like a the money market account because basically your money is just accumulating and going into your brokerage account. However, you need to go in there manually and make sure you go to buy. So there, again, every brokerage is a little different, but it's pretty simple. They're all pretty basic. You will go to your trade. You're going to make a trade and then you're going to go and buy the fund that you chose to invest in. And you want to do this Again, just keep buying. If you do it every month, again, this is creating the habit. This is how you want to do it, which is why I recommend the automatic contribution. But keep in mind, even if it's automatic, even if you're automatically, you know, hey, I got 150 coming out of my paycheck every two weeks, automatically going into my brokerage. That's great. That's, a, that's great. And that's what you should be doing. But you do need to go back in and buy the fund. Because if not, the money is just going to accumulate in your money market account and it's going to say what you have available. And, but if you're not buying the funds and you're not invested, so please, because I made that mistake. Like I said, I was young. I, you know, I wasn't really doing a lot of research at the time. I was just excited just to get going started. And I'm thinking this whole time that my money is going into this account that it's automatically being invested. No, the fuck it wasn't. <laughs> I was pissed off. <laughs> so please make sure that you do that. You are going to want to go in there. Sometimes what I even like to do, and it's really up to you, everybody's different. Sometimes what I like to do is I will just kind of let the money accumulate um, on purpose. So I'll, sometimes, you know, I'll have maybe three months go by, maybe four months go by and I'll let it accumulate. And then I'll just put, you know, a big amount in. I mean, I don't really recommend doing that. I personally just do it just because, I don't know, sometimes I just, I get a little busy and I forget. I'm like, you know, let me just let it accumulate and then maybe I'm going to buy something different. Maybe I'm going to add something new to my portfolio. But for now, I wouldn't really recommend that if you're getting started. Just really, you want to do dollar cost averaging. What dollar cost averaging means is you're going to just keep the habit of just buying every month. It doesn't matter. Just keep buying every month. And that way, overall, with the interest, it's going to be a dollar cost average. So it's going to average out. So really, that is definitely what's recommended by by experts so i do do that but again like i said there's just times where i'm like you know what? i'm just gonna let it accumulate might want to add something new to my portfolio and i'm not sure what i want to buy it so again that is a personal choice but uh please just make sure you buy the fund please buy the fund because if not you're gonna be pissed off because you've been putting all this money in there and you ain't gaining no interest <laughs> so i just wanted to share that information again keeping it kind of simple i'm going to kind of review it Step one is just picking your brokerage account. Don't overcomplicate this. Uh, step two, make sure you pick a fund. You will want to spend a little bit more time researching this because again, you want this is going to be a long-term investment. So make sure you feel good about this fund. You know, whether you need to go, you know, watch some YouTube videos, you know, read some books, um, whatever you need to do, listen to some podcasts before you pick one. You want you are going to want to spend a little bit more time on this. And then step three, just really determine how much can you put aside. You know, what's going to work for you? Do you want to just put an X amount, a dollar amount for now? Keep it simple. Or do you want to dive deeper and say, you know what? I have a goal to reach. I want to reach, you know, 50,000 in my liquid assets. I want to reach 100,000. I want to reach half a million. You know, do you want to dive a little bit deeper? You know, reevaluate your expenses, reevaluate your spending plan, your budget. 
then if you, I would recommend that if you want to really advance your investments. But again, keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. If you're not there yet, that's okay. There's time for that. Just get started. Just keep it simple. And then again, step four, make sure you buy the fund. Please, that is the most important step that I feel like a lot of people fail to tell you. So make sure you buy the fund. You are going to have to manually go in there and make sure you do the trade. So yeah, I really hope that that helps you guys. And maybe just some extra tips that I wanted to share. Um, I like to use a compound interest calculator because I, I just like playing with it. You can download any kind of compound interest calculator. I like playing with the numbers, you know, saying, hey, you know what, if I put, you know, $300 a month away, you know, for this, you know, X amount of years, uh, let's just play with the interest rate. Let's just keep it simple, say 10%. You know, what's going to be my gain? I love playing with that a lot because it really helps to keep me a little more disciplined and motivated. And then that's why when I started, you know, I'm like, hey, if I put, you know, $2,000 a month away, I put, you know, how much is it going to accumulate to? So I like playing with that. It really just kind of helps to keep me motivated just to see the overall picture because in the beginning, you don't really see the gains. You know, it's, 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 it's small, right? You know, you're putting maybe 300 bucks away, maybe 500 bucks or maybe even 150. In the beginning, it's like you don't really see the growth and it takes a lot of time and it does take patience. So when you get to play with the compound interest calculator, you can kind of, it just motivates you because then you can kind of see the overall big picture of it. So that's really what helped me um, keep buying, okay? Just keep on buying the funds. I know I did my book review on the book called Just Keep Buying, and it's just true. Again, it's just, you just keep buying the funds, dollar cost averaging, doesn't matter what the market's doing. I mean, this last year in 2022, we know it was a shitty year. The market has been falling and falling, right? So keeping in mind for me, I was like, damn, I was able to still reach a hundred thousand and my liquid assets with this shitty ass market. So again, don't let that scare you. I mean, right now I even wrote down. So right now, um, as of today, when I'm recording, uh, my Merrill Lynch account, I was checking my personal funds just to see how much the, um, the interest is up or down. And right now they're all down. So my Merrill Lynch is down 20%. My 401k through my employer is down 16%. And then my other IRA that I have, um, through Vanguard, that one's down 6%. It's a little bit more conservative. So that's why it's not as aggressive. So that one's down 6%. So think about it. Like I'm just going to keep on putting money in because it doesn't matter. This is the best time to buy. So really we should be excited. I mean, I was excited. I'm like, fuck yeah, shit's on sale. You just keep buying, put more in because remember, this isn't going to stay like this forever. Okay. The market is always going to fluctuate. Do not let that scare you. Yes, it's a shitty market. Be excited. This is the best time right now to get in because shit's on sale. Shit is cheap and just keep on buying. Don't be afraid. So all of my accounts are down right now, but I'm still excited. I'm going to keep on buying. I don't care. That's not going to stop me. You know, when I saw that, damn, I reached a hundred thousand and my liquid assets, I was like, oh shit. Okay. Imagine if it was a good market and shit was up, you know, just imagine how much more I would have. And we're going to get there. It's going to get there. That's why it's all patience, discipline, and be consistent. So be consistent. Uh, so that's kind of how I did it. Again, keeping it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Just start. Just build a habit. It's really everything is just about building that positive habit that's going to get you to your goals. And again, I always keep law of attraction in there too. You know, just keep manifesting. You know what? My income is increasing. My expenses um, are lowering and I have more money in abundance. Using all those positive affirmations to really keep your mindset on track and you know just keep those positive beliefs and create a new belief system for yourself that's going to serve you so i really hope that helps you guys again just really wanted to keep a simple word for me i'm not a professional please this is not financial professional advice like i said i'm just a girl on youtube we just haven't we just talking over a cup of coffee okay that's all this is so thank you guys so much for stopping by spending time with me i greatly appreciate it i know your time is valuable so seriously Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if you got anything out of this, please comment, like, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts, you know, share some of your successes. It just helps to keep us all motivated and on the right path. Okay. So you guys, I love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. And until next time, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. I'm back real quick. One more thing. I really wanted to give a shout out to my girl, Rosalie. She has been showing a lot of love and supporting me on my videos. And she was the one who kind of gave me the idea to share how I reached 100,000 in my liquid assets. Because she was like, girl, I want to know. Talk about that. So huge shout out to her. Love you, girl. Thank you so much for all the love and support. And I also wanted to add, I forgot to share some of my favorite books really quick. Again, just wanted to, like I mentioned, I've read a lot of finance books. These are some that kind of helped me. This one, I read this one. When did I read this one? Look, it's got, you guys, I got dust all over my books. I got so many books all over the place. There was some books that I couldn't find that I wanted to share, but 
like I said, I got books everywhere. I'm not sure where I put it. But this one, Relax Into Wealth, I really like because he talks a lot about a law of attraction and manifesting while, you know, trying to, you know, reach these goals of like, you know, passive income. And it's a lot about mindset. So this book, I really, really recommend. Again, I read this, I want to say maybe about seven, eight years ago, maybe six years ago. I don't know, but I do got a lot of good notes in here. I'm, I probably should just read it again. So I'm going to keep this one aside because I think I'm going to want to skim through this and read this one again. But this one I would really recommend as far as really trying to help create a better uh, positive mindset and belief system around money. I think this will really help you. And again, keeping you on track. This one here called Invested. Um, this one, she talks her dad, Daniel Town. Her dad is a big time investor and he's got some books and he, um, they have a podcast and um, she talks a little bit about how she learned from her dad of the importance of investing. And so this is really good to kind of get a better understand understanding of investing. And um, it was really simple and easy to read. So I recommend this one. This one here, you're broke because you want to be. This one I probably read maybe about 10 years ago. And I can't really remember a lot about it. But what I do remember is that it really kind of gives you like no BS. Like, look, like if you're broke it's your motherfucking fault. Okay, let's just be real. It's your fault. Okay, so really, this is just kind of a way to kind of just motivate you to be like, look, take responsibility, take accountability, and you got the power to change it and change your circumstances. So I would recommend this if you know, especially if you kind of like have a lot of that negative belief and a lot of maybe victim mentality, well, you know, it's not my fault, it's because of this or that or outside circumstances. And this is really going to kind of you know, kick you in the ass and remind you like, look, if you broke, motherfucker, that's your bad. That's your fault. So you change it. Okay. You can change it and it's up to you. So this one, um, again, I read it a long time ago, so I kind of don't really remember too much about it, but, um, I just remember it was like a good eye opener. So that I recommend, but last and not least this one, I highly, highly recommend if you're going to read any finance book, I would recommend this be the one because this one, I will teach you to be rich by Ramit Sethi. This one, I felt was a very good overview of like finances in general like it covered everything like from debt you know to investing look as you can see I had so many notes here this was like my financial bible so this one I highly recommend um I took a lot of notes in here this one I think I read when I was trying to get out of debt and pay off my um it was like 15,000 in debt I had and this really just kind of gave me step by step and a lot of encouragement and motivation um I think I even took notes on some of the brokerage accounts that he recommended like Schwab, Fidelity, Vanguard, like I mentioned earlier and setting up the automatic transfer. So this I would recommend if you're going to read any book, if you're not really a big reader, but you're like, you know what, I need something to motivate me to kind of get me to understand to get my money right. This is going to be the one right here. All right. I really, really recommend it. Like I said, it just covers everything, gives you step by step. It just kind of cuts through all the bullshit and just tells you, look here, this is what it is and um gives you just all the tools and resources that you need so wanted to share that really quick because i know i forgot that i had set these books aside i had to take all the dust off of them because you know all, you all know i'll be reading a lot of books and you know they be collecting dust all over the place because after i read it i put it aside and i try to scoot the books up to the front that i haven't read yet um because y'all just i'm a fucking book nerd and i love it all right so i just want to share that and i hope that helps you guys so thank you guys so much again for watching and i will talk to you guys soon thank you